I don't think you have any problems. You sounded so great last night. Okay. Play. to do it slowly. I want you to do it without the pedal and let's find out what's going on. Okay? Okay? <laughs> okay. What I would like you to do is when you do that, I want you to pay ma more attention to the left hand. Ta -da -ta -ta, when you come back here. Okay. Yeah, what do you have to do? Yeah, please. Okay? Pay attention to the octave and the, to the fifth finger also because the finger the fifth finger is crossing down. So play the fifth finger also. Play the whole octave. That's right. That's right. Yes. More energy. Is that better? Yeah. Okay. Do it again once more. from that passage. Slower, even slower, okay? Okay, I want you to pay more attention to your left hand, okay? I think, I think that your left hand is a little bit, it has to be, it's a little bit like, uh, it has to be more like, like, uh, you know, more, more shape again. And then, and then also when you play the hand, that you really, even if you release the fingers here, but they make sure, yeah, no, release the finger, play the thumb, and then where you go, and then, okay, let me, let me show you, let me show you what I mean. Your hand is a little bit like this, you know, make sure that the hand is, whatever the notes are, you know, so make sure that the, the thumb has a special energy. Okay, but it's how you release, but you're releasing it with the fingers a little bit curled. Where, where, where are the notes? Okay. Yeah. Last try? Yeah. You, you cannot do? The hand has to be open. So you have to. You really have to, to make sure that you combine that, no? Da, it, make sure that this note like communicates with the left hand. A little bit more, you know, make sure that you can hear all of that. How you go from here is to be, you have to make sure that it, it takes you here. Exactly. That's right. That's right. Again. Again. Yes, yes, yes. That's right. That's right. Again. Okay, you know what it is? After, when you have the quick chord to the single note, I want you to pay attention to this thing, to this G. That's right, yeah. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes. Once more. 
from the same person. I never noticed. This now was together. Ah, he never noticed that was together, you see? That's the missing link. That's why you feel uncomfortable. Because, you know, if there is one note that is not linking the whole process of making music, you feel, you know, I, 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 um, I worked very much with Ida Handel, a very famous violinist, who was a child prodigy. And she, I asked her once, do you have, did you ever have a memory lapse? She said, no, what's that? I said, so I said to her, this is something that happens to a lot of people. So she says, no, it is for, for, because for me, every note has a meaning, and it goes somewhere. I see the whole thing on the score. She says, if I need to call you on the phone, and I dial your number, and I'm missing one number, I won't be able to talk to you. So she actually said that, and this is exactly, you know, just the fact that you discovered that there was that note, that's going to put the whole passage into perspective, you know? <laughs> Exactly. That's what I'm telling, telling you. Is it's organization. If you are organized, then it's clear to the brain. It's clear to you, and it's clear to us. And that's when, when you hear people like Sokolov or things like that. They, they don't miss anything. Every detail in the music is there. And they're very, very important, especially when you have, you know, like uh, uh, quick notes. It's very important to, to group from the quick notes, but always to pay attention to the note that is single. It's very important because it's like passing, you know? Exactly. You want to do a little faster? Magic. Fixed? Yeah. yeah. That's what it is. What, what, what you need to do is, you know, not even with, with, with your incredible gift, you have to make sure that you, you, you know, there was a famous uh, uh, conductor. His name was uh, Sergio Chilibidaki, and I suggest that you, I'm going to send you some links because I think that you should really watch that a lot, you know. And he said that in music, everything is impulse and resolution. Everything is about impulse and resolution. If you want to create something special, you have to do something with your hands that produce that. Mm -hmm. If you want a certain timing in something, it has to come from somewhere else. So you, you kind of you ha you kind of like have to you have to set the stage. It's like everything has to be prepared for it. Right? Exactly. Exactly. Which is what Ilya, I'm sure, mm -hmm. shares with you all the time very much, you know. Mm -hmm. It's very much that's that's why his he, his music or the music of all these great artists is like that. Because there is there is a story, there is a something that follows, you know, and then the great, great artists don't don't miss any details. Because the detail is what makes a difference, you know. So when you have a technical problem, you have to ask yourself, why am I having this? Instead of practicing 12 hours, you know, no, repeating. I don't, no, I don't practice for 12 hours. But you don't have to because now you understand. Yeah. And when you understand something, you don't need to practice because it's like, it's in your memory already. It's clear. It made sense to you. You know, you have anything else? No? Yeah, I think that's it. Okay. One. Thank you, Leo. Who Thank else? You. My pleasure. Jun Hao. Jun Hao doesn't have any questions. <laughs> you know, Jun Hao, you know what you, you, can, you can do? If you want, bring the Schubert a little bit. You want the, the opening of the Schubert? You played it beautifully, by the way. That's why prodigies, you know, prodigies can, can I'm always, asto it's, it's astonishing to me how they do it. They, they, have, they have this ability to organize the score. That's all it is. It's okay. Yeah, play, play the beginning. Uh, With the music, put the music there, because you're not going to perform, you're just going yeah. to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you happy with that? Absolutely. You're not, okay. Why are you not happy? Um, well, this didn't come out. You know, okay, okay, so I'm going to tell you something. Yeah. I want you to really Imagine the sound you want, and I want you to play the first note with the sound you want, okay? And you know, once you started, you know, game over, you know? So that first note is very important. So just play the B and tell me what do you, how do you want that to sound? And what, make sure that you do not interfere and that your ear 
tells the hand what kind of yeah. a sound to produce. Okay, so just just give me the first note. Okay, we'll do it again. That's better. Again. But what if I tell you just to stand on the fourth finger, release these fingers, and make sure that you're working with gravity. Come down to the fourth finger, and release two and three. Again. 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 Okay, is that what you want? More or less? Okay, okay, okay. Make sure that your wrist is in one piece and your finger, you're just coming down with the fourth finger. Not with all the fingers. Just the fourth finger. Okay, but make sure two and three are released. Okay, right, that's better. That's much better. Again. Again. Make sure that you know you you know you don't don't try to fix anything. Just go down and just imagine the sound you want and just go down to it with gravity. Mm -hmm. Again, again. Again, make sure that your wrist doesn't go down. Uh huh. That's better. Again. Okay. Again. Okay. The other thing that I see, for instance, when 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 he plays, let me show you, that he he has to find the relationship here. He's he's doing this. No, here. Does he understand? So. Pass that until you got the sound that you want. So you, what, what's happening here? This is important, this is important. And this is important. This is so I want you to pay attention because you're you to hear that okay I want you to hear I want to hear because I don't hear I, it was like something that it was not clear so uh, this one actually this D is going to create to make sure that the hands play together again <coughs> okay yes exactly yeah open the open the hand if pretend that this is an octave okay okay yes but stand here, stand here a little bit. Yes. Again. It's slow. Okay, so he was not aware of this melody. that interplays with the right hand, okay? So I want you to be aware of that, again. I want to hit the D in the left hand a little bit more. Okay, and I want your, your rhythm to be a little bit more noble, and no rubatos, yam, ti, ta, ta, yam, ti, ta. You can, you can take a little bit of time from the bass to the D, but T, it has to be more regular, okay? No, again, how do you play? Uh -huh. Again, but much better, okay? So I want you to now, I don't want you to focus on the right hand. I want to, I want that, that melody in the left hand. I want those notes in the left hand, okay? Yes. Okay, now I'm going to tell you to play with no pedal. And let's see how you can create that legato, okay? Use your ear. Okay, 
ta ta ta. That's higher. So I make sure that I hit, I can hit ta 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 ta. It goes higher. Okay. Okay. Well, he says he's using two five. Why? Ta ta ta. If you use one four, the the thumb has a special sound. And it's going to give you a better legato. Don't use two five, use one four. That's why you can actually hold, you can actually hold, hang on to the thumb. Yes. No, don't do the, don't the, ra, 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 no, very, no. None of that for Schubert or, or Chopin, okay? Very simple. No pedal, yes, yes. That's right, keep going. tell you or to all of you you need to practice without the pedal the pedal is just the icing on the cake it blurs your ear it blurs your ear it doesn't allow you to listen to what's on the printed page really and you know something guess what you sounded more legato when you did not use with the pedal than you sounded when you used the pedal. am I right or not you sounded more connected do it again no pedal Very good. Now, maybe you put a little bit of a pedal. Very little, okay? Like the minute you put the pedal, it sounds already. Yeah. Okay, again. those chords make sure don't squeeze the chords just play the chords okay yes don't squeeze just imagine Ilya's hand you know yeah. Ilya Ilya just puts the hands like that and they sound rich okay just imagine his hands really I'm serious don't squeeze And I want to hear that that those notes I was telling you. That, yeah. Thumb and the left thumb. I want to hear the thumb. 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 Lenta. Yes. Thumb. you to do it again I don't I want you to not the same thing don't move can you almost feel that your hands are doing somebody else is playing 
you are, you know, you are, you are just listening to somebody else, okay? From the beginning, from the beginning, from, yeah. Da, 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 yeah. You can look at it, you, you, know, you can open your eyes, but I, I want to just feel that your arms are kind of like working by themselves, okay? Mm -hmm. But don't relax. You see, we, we, okay, don't relax. Make sure that your posture is right. Mm -hmm. No, as you, you see, change the fingers because it is going to get different results. much better. So much better. Very important to have the right posture mm -hmm. because the minute you start <laughs> doing these things, you know, you're disturbing your body, really. And then when 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 you when you when you do if you are not really in the properly s sitting properly and allowing your I, I don't mean you have to be stiff but if you are slouching a little bit what happens naturally the arm the elbows go out so you have to make sure that you're, you 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 are like that so you can actually work and you have to become really I'm I'm very serious you have to become almost a medium a medium yeah. between the composer you know the minute you put too much of yourself you're killing the music so you really should uh, look at the score in a very noble and in a very almost sacred kind of a way you know without getting yourself too involved but that alone a posture alone can really take care of a lot of problems and then listening you know, don't try to create rubato. Play every note. Bring every voice. That's the answer to play to virtuosity, really. It's not like practicing, practicing, you know, without knowing, but always, you know, with your ear. Your ear, your ear and your hands, you, you know, they have to become one. And you have to respond to that. And your ear will give you the information on how to move. Okay. If you are ready to move. You know, if you are, everything is aligned in your body, it will allow you to, it's like walking. It's like walking, you know, so if, if there is a bump, you know, you're going to automatically, the brain says, oh my God, you know, there's a step there, you know. Yeah. So, so it, it has to become a very natural process. So when you are learning a piece of music, you have to say, oh, you know something, that voice, I didn't realize that this creates that, that creates, and you start looking at that, and there is a logic. On every piece of music, there is a logic. And and you and I think it's a fascinating process if you look at music like that. It's not boring because every time you say, "Oh, I'm going to learn the Beethoven Sonata Opus 111." Oh my God, look what he wrote! Oh my God, this score, this note. Be aware of everything on the score because that's your answer to playing great and to never be nervous when you play in front of the public because you are connecting all the dots. Really, that's what it is. Thank you, John Howe. <laughs> what time is it? I don't know what time is it. It's already Ten five? five. Huh? Ten to five. Yeah, we got it. Do you have any questions? Because I don't want to hold you more than you. It's been an hour and a half. Do you, any questions? No? You, Ruya, do you have any questions? Yeah. You said never be nervous. But sometimes it, you can't help yourself. I think to be a little bit, to be a little bit excited is one thing. I think that if you really prepare, properly and I think that if you approach everything with a sense of wisdom and and, and, and intelligence and you f you you just don't practice but you really try to see the, the the secrets in every piece of music you're not going to get nervous 
because and that's you don't get nervous also if you from day one you learn things the right way with the right so, so you have to become almost like a scientist you know you have to become almost like a scientist and, and say you know this piece of music oh my god th look at this look at th look at that tight note look at that uh, dotted note look at that harmony look at how this one is going here and this one is going there and you start connecting the dots and i think that if you really really you connect the dots when you're learning even the most complicated music you're not going to get nervous because you're feeding your brain with information that makes sense and when it makes sense you're not nervous because it becomes the way you speak it becomes a language really you know it really really becomes of course you know when you have a big career and you have a many programs to learn quickly it's challenging you need still to practice many hours not to not for endurance what you need to practice many hours is like 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 a scientist like reading books it's like if you like to read books you know you have to spend a lot of time reading books you're not practicing the alphabet or how the words are formed you're just it's like a, you're, you're informing your brain of a lot of information so so if you have that approach let's say you know you have a concert in three four months then you choose a program from day one you have to how do you think uh, Glenn Gould learned the Greek concerto riding on a train and he went and he played it there is a there is a pianist in my in our festival his name is Nick Van Bloss it's a very interesting story he suffers he's a real genius he suffers uh, from Tourette syndrome which is uh, I don't know what if you know what Tourette syndrome is like a uh, millions of involuntary motions that go to your body you know the body is very busy doing a lot of things I shouldn't be doing and uh, he was uh, when he was 25 he was entering all these competitions and winning of course and he entered the um, Jose Turbi competition and uh, he everybody that remembers him in that competition say that it was just something from our space it was just incredible but he had one of these outbursts of this Tourette that really you know he was trying to hide it and he couldn't hide it and it was embarrassing and then he decided to quit the competition even though he was the outright winner and he stopped playing the piano for 15 years he went to uh, he's going to come next year here to the Academy he went to Portugal and he didn't want a piano in his apartment no piano nothing nothing to do with the piano and then after 15 years he wrote a book which you can find it is called busy body so he tells his autobiography there and then he decided to learn the Goldberg variations just by looking at the score with no piano there and one day he went with a friend and he said you know I just I think I've, I, I've, I've learned the Goldberg variations." so the friend said can you play it and he sat down and played the whole Goldberg variation without having touched the piano and immediately you know they contacted somebody in England and uh, the Tourette Foundation so he gave a concert to raise funds for Tourette because it was very interesting when he played the piano the Tourette disappeared he didn't have anything or it, it was the only calm moment that he had when he was at the piano outside of the piano it was hell for him and then immediately he was approached by recording companies and he did a CD of the Goldberg Variations and he did um, some, some Bach concertos which he conducted and this company is called Biz has a life contract with him forever anytime he calls them he says I want to record the Schumann Kaiser Jan he goes to the studios and he records they can watch at night they can watch at night you know the, I mean he, he we put the Goldberg Variations Howard put it on, on our YouTube link you need to watch that live concert it was 76 minutes there was not one person in the audience that could breathe after that 76 minutes and this year he came back and played the Diabelli variations it was breathtaking okay so so you tell me how did he learn the Goldberg variations without the piano next to him he learns a lot he has a repertoire that is scary you know he said oh I'm going to record the Prelude by Chopin. I'm going to record the Fantasy uh, next week. I'm going to record uh, just like that. He just sits down and records all these these, these things. It's, it's just amazing, you know.